Hey everybody, my new video today is going to be on the Clico Atom and expansion module number three. Um, now this computer system uh, has a lot of, uh, I would say, bad karma attached to it. Um, the, I would say it's probably equal to what Atari had with uh, E.T. and uh, their port of Pac-Man. E.T., they always say it's like the worst game, system, game of all time and Pac-Man was a horrible port. Now, I'm going to have to say that I, I don't agree with E.T. being the worst game of all time. There's definitely far, far worse. And Pac-Man, it definitely was not a good port of Pac-Man. It, it was playable, but it definitely wasn't what people expected. But the point I'm trying to make is uh, there's a lot of hearsay and, and, and people talking on the Internet saying, you know, uh, E.T. And, and that brought down the entire gaming industry and the gaming crash, and it's a horrible game. And people just buy that without ever trying it and keep that, uh, that bullshit going. Now... The Atom computer definitely had some issues, but it is in no way as bad as uh, people talk about it. Now, I'm going to take a little step back here about what kind of happened with this system. So let's take a quick flashback. When we jump back into 1982, um, I was one of the first people definitely online to pick up a ColecoVision. I had an Atari 2600 and I liked it, but uh, I had to have Donkey Kong. It was one of my favorite games, and ColecoVision definitely... Uh, sold me on its graphics and gameplay. And anyone who ever played the ColecoVision uh, back in the day, or even today, have to admit that it was a phenomenal system. Now, unfortunately, uh, the gaming crash, Northern American, I should say, Northern American gaming crash, it didn't happen around the world, uh, definitely only happened here in the U.S., but the North American gaming crash really hit the system hard. It never really had its full potential realized. Uh, it came out in 82. The gaming crash was the end of 83, 84. So the ColecoVision really never took its full stride, although it was no question it was a great system for its day. Had expansion options like expansion module number one and expansion module number two, although they shouldn't really have called it that. It didn't use the expansion module at all. It plugged into the joystick ports, so that's kind of like they cheated. Now they had the roller controller, the super axe controllers, but when I bought this back in the day, one thing that always caught my eye was expansion module number three turn it into a full computer coming soon. Now, even that was kind of weird because uh, before the Atom had come out, or expansion module number three, I should say, um, there was a super game module that they were touting as expansion module number three. And basically, it was supposed to be uh, a, a tape wafer, uh, a wafer tape, which is kind of almost like a small 8-track, uh, and it was supposed to play super games. So even like this Donkey Kong, which was a good port, it was missing a lot of things. So if you had added this super game module, you would have gotten all the levels, the ability to save. It was supposed to be phenomenal. Now, the problem is that the wafers that uh, were going to be used were not the most reliable things. So Coleco kind of went a different route. And that kind of trickled into what did become expansion mod number three, the actual Atom computer. So now that we took this little quick step back on this, let's go back to the Coleco Atom. So as you can see here, the, the Atom itself had come in in two flavors. There was the full Atom computer, which you kind of see here. And, you know, it's a really nice design. It really is. And a lot of people get, put a lot of hate on the printer. We'll get to that in a second. But the actual machine itself is a really nice design. If you remember that same time frame, the IBM personal computer had just came out. And you had the big motherboard, the monitor sat on top, and a, and a separate keyboard. Now, uh, up until that time, like Text Instruments, Atari, Apple, Commodore... Everything was, even the TRS-80, everything was kind of built in, into one. I guess TRS-80 had a couple of models that weren't, but for the most part, your keyboard and your main system was built into one, one unit. And it, it was fine, but sometimes you wanted to lay back, type, and you just couldn't do it easily on those things. There were enhancements you could have added to them to do it, but it wasn't from the get-go. And I, I really think that this is really a, a, it's a nice, nice system. So you had a nice keyboard, and the keyboard really is nice. Um, it's got nice feedback to it. Uh, you got a power indicator light on it. Now, this separates here. You can use this as a numeric keypad. Uh, it really wouldn't be good for typing in too many numbers, though. It's really more for just saying, hey, I'm a computer. Um, you can move your cursor around with the joystick. But this does separate, so you can have just a keyboard alone. Uh, then you had your memory uh, console here, which houses the infamous digital data, uh, data pack drives. Uh, I do have two here. And I have to do another shout-out to Millie of um, Retro System Rescue. Um, when I got this, one of my drives was not working right. He repaired it phenomenally, and I bought a, another drive from him uh, very reasonably. So I would definitely take a look at Retro System Rec Rescue. 
I'll put a link down below if you want anything uh, for Coleco. And other things, he's, he, he does a lot of repairs and all the other systems as well, but he's definitely a, an Adam guy and um, uh, he's very fair and he's a good guy and it's definitely worth uh, your time to take a look at his site. But uh, the main console here in the complete system here, uh, you had your Adam computer, uh, memory console, um, that was actually, um, uh, it's touted as being 80K uh, and it's not completely accurate. 16K was from the ColecoVision half. Uh, the rest was for the Atom. I think there were two 32K banks and then another 16K bank from the ColecoVision. Now, since this is an uh, all complete unit, it's basically two whole motherboards in here. Uh, this motherboard on this side here uh, is an actual ColecoVision. It's not directly the motherboard out of a real ColecoVision. It's been, the board's been shifted around a little bit to make it work in here. And there's actually an interface cable in the back that attaches to a second board, which is the actual Atom board. There is a cartridge slot. Now this reset here, when you pull this, resets the Atom half of the board and puts you in Atom mode. If I was to hit this reset here with no cartridge in it, it puts it into the ColecoVision mode. So now we would be looking for a cartridge in the, in the slot. Press this again, puts you back in your Atom mode. Now the Atom, uh, unlike other systems at the time, didn't have basic built in. They had um, an electric typewriter built in when you would hit the keys, like here, or type on the, on the typewriter. Or if you hit the uh, escape key, it puts it into word processing mode. And now it's a word processor. It won't type anything until you're, you tell it to do so. Now, I'm going to pop the lid here. Uh, again, very nice design. You put your finger in here. It might be a little difficult. I might pause this just to get this open because these, these little guys sometimes are hard to open. Okay, that's better. So I was able to get this little open and it opens up like so. And you can see, again, it's, it's a nice design. You have your two data drives here. It only came with one, and this was a a fake uh, front end here, but I have two in here now. The interface down here, and you actually have some slots. Uh, again, this is on a, from a system from Coleco. And, and again, what I want to tell everyone is, you know, when people think of Coleco, sometimes they, they think of this, they think of garbage and, and, you know, bad design and everything. If you really think back to Coleco, they were kind of like Atari, when, and I tout this as well. A, early Atari was very innovative. They were coming up with new things. Some things worked, some things did not. But the industry was new back then. People today don't really, either kids today don't realize it or people forget. The industry was very new. No one really knew what was going to work, what wasn't going to work. So companies were trying all these different things to make it work. And Coleco was no different. Um, the Coleco Vision was a hit. They had before that their Telstar line of like Pong consoles or like Tank consoles. And then they had their little mini cades, which I, unfortunately I don't have any. But they did really nice designs, artwork. They, were, they really tried hard to give the consumer something really nice, something to link them from the home to the arcades. And I would say the only real problem that happened here with the Atom itself was when the ColecoVision had come out, the gaming industry was in its golden age. So they had plenty of time to design, and they did. Um, their system was really the next generation console. They had a lot of time to see what worked with Atari, what worked with Intellivision, how to improve it and come out with something at the right time, test everything to make sure it was bulletproof. And the ColecoVision rocked. It was awesome. The Atom, unfortunately, kind of fell into a different category. The Gaming crash didn't happen overnight, uh, but the writing was on the wall that the games in, 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 in the U.S. were kind of getting boring. People were looking for something new. You had Commodore with the VIC-20. You had the Texan Smith T994A. You had the Color Computer. You had all these other systems coming out, and, and Coleco said, you know what? We need to get our system out there soon and, and fast because if we don't, our, our Coleco vision may kind of fall asunder, and then people may not even look at our, our console. So I think what happened here with the Atom was they – they definitely rushed to get certain things out. Again, the two uh, data pack drives are not cassettes. People do say they're just cassette drives. They're not. We'll talk about that in a second. But they originally were supposed to be the wafers, the tape wafers, which were like mini eight tracks going in. They were expensive. They were a little bit slow, and, and they were faulty. So Coleco kind of had a rush to come up with their own design. And these are actually really ingenious. Um, when they work, they kind of work great, but... They definitely didn't have enough time to test them to make sure there wasn't any problems. So, again, two data pack drives here. And when you hit these ejects here, it does look like a cassette drive. I mean, if you look inside here, you have the two rollers that would turn the cassettes. There's a magnetic head, a read-write head. But they do have this other little wheel here. And that's probably the, one of the bigger problems on this drive is that little guy. So, let me explain. When you put a cassette in a cassette player, you hit play and the tape plays and that's it. It doesn't seek. You can't, unless you look at the, uh, they sometimes have a little, uh, 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 almost like a roller wheel. It tells you one, two, three, how many seconds have gone by. 
but you can't seek. When you, when you put a tape in that TI or Commodore 64, you got to kind of find out where the program was and, and load it. Now, the uh, digital data packs that come here uh, are actually two tracks. When you use a regular audio tape, you have side A that you can play, and you have to flip the tape over and put in side B. And um, hold on one second, I'm gonna grab a tape. So here's a, just a regular audio tape. So back in the day when you played music on these, you would put this in the machine like so, play the tape, when it ran out, you had to turn it over, so you flip it to the other side, and then put it in and play this side. These digital data packs are a little bit different. What they did was on side A would be a program, or whatever it is, whether it be a game or something you wrote, that'd be on side A. Side B, had an index track. So an audio tape only had a head that read one side at a time. That was the first thing. So when you put this in, an atom, it's reading the program from the A side, but at the exact same time, there's a second head on here reading the side B at the same time. That's the index track. And that's kind of where that wheel comes into play. Best way I can describe it is that wheel, it's free floating, but on the other side of it is a small wheel with little notches in it. If you have an old optical mouse, the optical mouse uh, would have a wheel inside there with little notches cut out. And as the wheel turned, those notches let light through or not let light through to tell it, you know, one data bit has gone by. So that's what's happening here. So these cassettes not only are much, much faster than audio tapes. This doesn't run at the slow standard speed of an audio cassette. It's much faster. But because of that wheel, it's able to know where it is in the track. So you can seek like a floppy drive. Now, this is, again, much faster than audio tape but it's definitely not as fast as a disk drive. It, it's probably not far off, but it is definitely off from that. But that wheel was the ingenious part. That wheel here let you know exactly where you were and you can track out your data. Now, the downside was this was a high-speed tape drive. Uh, still based on, it's based on an audio tape, even though it's not. But what would happen is that wheel tended to get hot and literally the damn wheel would melt. And it can melt, it would go inside and gump up your index wheel, and then your drive technically was dead. Uh, again, Retro System Rescue, Millie is able to uh, repair them. Very good. Uh, and again, back to working order, and hopefully those, the new wheels he uses, I don't think will melt, it's more of a, a plastic uh, than uh, what they used here. But that was the, the, probably the main problem, was that uh, even though you uh, could read it like a floppy, using these tape drives a lot could melt that wheel and damage your tapes. And there's also a thing, I don't know 100% for sure. Again, I'm not a huge Atom guy yet, um, pretty early on. Some people say that the tapes still will wear out after 5,200 uses, which I can understand being how fast they're being read and pulled and, and seeked on uh, in the machine, but I don't know that for sure. Now, the other problem that they have is not only this problem here, and you can see in, in this drive, this is one that um, Retro System Rescue was able to put a new wheel on. Uh, he actually makes them and uh, he was able to get the, both these drive working. So again, hats off to, to Millie. So that's number one. The other problem is this guy here. Now, the point of the Atom at the time was that for the price, and they were shooting for $550 originally, but it went for much more. I remember it being at Macy's almost $700, but it was to get everything all included. You didn't buy your, your Atari 400, then you had to go out and buy a cassette drive or a disc drive. Then you had to go out and buy a printer or this or that other thing. They wanted to give you everything all at once. Here you got a ColecoVision game system. You got a computer system. And you had a printer for doing schoolwork, word processing. Back then, it was typewriters, man. Let me tell you, for you young kids, typewriters sucked. Okay? But they had this big guy here. And this is a beast. It is big. However, it wasn't a dot matrix printer. At the time, dot matrix printers were the, were the rage. Um, but... They weren't true letter quality. I mean, you could definitely tell it was done by a, a computer. This is a daisy wheel. So we pop this little guy off here for a second. We can pop this up. There's a little tab here. I can get it. There we go. So you can see it's actually a daisy wheel. And typewriters of the day had used this as well. So every letter on here is a perfect letter. So you couldn't do graphics on it per se. But if you were doing uh, school reports and stuff, uh, it was great. It was slow. It was very slow and clunky. As a matter of fact, this one's not working right now. Um, I want to get to it, what this is used for right now. But um, there's a motherboard on here that I think the chip is bad. And I'm going to try and see if I can get that working. So right now, it's acting just as a power supply, which comes into one of the next things people hate about the Atom was that in order to use this computer system, you had to have this printer. The only power switch and power supply is in the back of this unit. So you plug this into the wall. 
then this cable you see over here is for the power. This power is the, the Atom computer. And so it's one cable for everything, but you have to have this printer going into your Atom. Now if I bring this into the back here, uh, hopefully you can, you can see it. The power switch is in here. So you needed to have a working printer's power supply to completely power your entire Atom computer system. Let me put this back in here for right now. Um, so a lot of people hated that. Now, recently there's been people who have met, modified uh, the printer, taken the power supplies out and used it standalone and put it in a separate case. There's a good guy in Atari age that used to make um, uh, very, very nice external power supplies. He doesn't make them anymore right now. He's, he's thinking about other options. But there are other options than having this big printer. I don't have them, so I have to have my, my big printer. Now, uh, again, if we go on the side here, you have two joystick ports that you would have for the regular ColecoVision and the standard ColecoVision expansion slot. So you can plug in, uh, technically you can plug in the expansion module one for Atari. And who knows, I, this is not working right now, my expansion module number three, but maybe I can plug that in and have an atom going into an atom. Who knows, I'll try it one day. Now, on the back of the uh, atom here, you have your standard uh, channel three, channel four, RF out. Now this next one here is a video out for a video monitor. They didn't include one for audio though, it's kind of strange. They, they did this for the composite out, but there is no audio out here. However, there's a seven pin DIN that does the same thing as here. There's video and audio out. So it's kind of weird that they would do that and put composite with no audio out here. So I'm gonna make a special cable here. It's very easy to do. And I'll have audio and video coming out in this particular spot. But that's really it as far as the, the main original console. The expansion module number three here, uh, it's very, very similar. Um, it has an expansion port here because what happens on the expansion module three, you have to plug this into, as you can see here, it plugs into the front of your ColecoVision's expansion module unit. So it turns it into an Atom. So you, this has a, a ColecoVision and an Atom board in here. This plugs into your standard ColecoVision and will turn your ColecoVision like they promised on their original marketing material into a computer. And I, again, I give kudos to Coleco. I mean, Atari had never really said it with the 2600, but they did tout they were gonna make it into a computer and they had a prototype, never released it. Um, the 5200 and 7800, they kind of did definitely 7800, they promised a keyboard attachment and then they pulled that off. And television, man, what a fiasco they had. They designed a really nice uh, keyboard component you dropped your television into with a built-in cassette Kind of similar to this, it was able to seek, uh, I don't know if they used the same type of technology, but the, it did have some seeking capability. But it was so damn expensive, and they had problems with it, that they pulled it from the shelves and were getting sued left and right because of it. So they came out with this ECS uh, computer, which was complete garbage. I do have one, I'll do another video on that. Total garbage, 4K RAM, it sucked like shit. But it got the lawyers off the back. They released a computer component, people couldn't sue. Uh, Bally, uh, their Astrocade, again, touted the computer add-on module, the Zgrass computer. Uh, I think maybe one or two got released. Uh, I do not have one. But again, it was promises and they were broken. They never really released it. Coleco said they were gonna release this, and they did. Um, it may have long-term really screwed up their company because of the problems that they had and, and, and the amount of returns that went back because of the drive, the printer, power issues, and so forth. But they, again, it was because they were rushing it. Once they got everything ironed out, it's a really nice system. But unfortunately, when you have maybe 70, 80% of your initial stock come back as defective, that's gonna stick. And quite honestly, that's probably what killed this more than anything. They supported it for as long as they could, I think in about two years. And then that was really it. Coleco kind of went uh, belly up. They had the Cabbage Patch dolls, which kind of took them on a little bit longer, but again, it, it hurt them too much. And you can see in here, just like the big brother there, you still have your two slots for uh, digital data packs and you still have slots. So it really is a complete atom that would connect to your uh, clicker vision. Now, another ingenious thing that they had here was um, this little guy right here. This little guy right here, it's called AtomNet. There are two ports. There's one here, there's one on the side, I believe, uh, over down there next to the power supply. And the big brother has the same thing. So AtomNet is basically a serial interface. The keyboard uh, has its own microprocessor in it and the printer has its own microprocessor in it. So they talk serially. So that's kind of neat too. You can plug this keyboard into this jack here or the one on the side, the Atom doesn't care. It can communicate to it. If you've got the disk drive unit, same thing. It plugs in through AtomNet. It's basically a serial interface, uh, a small network, which again was really ingenious. You didn't see that type of stuff on uh, computers back in the day. I mean, the TI had its expansion bus, which is similar to this on here and the other systems did too, but it was like its own mini network. And again, that was pretty damn 
ingenious uh, for the day. Um, I'll do another video about the, more of the, about the insides and taking apart and cleaning the system. I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, it's already running kind of long, and I want to show you some of the, the games on it as, as well. So one of the reasons I really got an Atom was, as a kid, uh, I was always just stoked about hearing about this computer system. I had gotten this catalog back in 84. You know, the uh, complete computer package, you know, everything included. Now, I, back then I had a TI-994A, and they kind of just left the market at this time. So I was like, oh, should I continue buying stuff for the TI or get this Atom? To be honest, because TI went out of the market, peripherals were cheap, dirt cheap. So I ended up staying with that. And I never had gotten an Atom, but I always liked it. I, I just always stuck with me. So the Atom is used for lots of things. I, again, I'm not a big Atom guy at this point in time, but I did want to try the Super Games. Now, nowadays, you can get a Super Game module, not the original one that Clico was going to release. There's actually a new Super Game module you can buy from Optico Games. Uh, they sell them on uh, AtariAge.com. Uh, I think they're sold out right now, but there'll be more towards the end of the year. And they've actually converted a lot of these Super Games to a, a cartridge. You do need to have the Super Game module to play it, but I wanted to play them in their, in their original fashion. So, basically, I'm going to grab a couple of the tapes. Uh, and I keep the tapes far away from my Atom because this is an early revision machine. And I don't know if the EMP, and that's, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, I think I did. Uh, when you first turn this machine on, I don't think, maybe I didn't. When you first turn this thing on, there's a huge amount of EMP, electromagnetic pulse, literally, that comes out of this particular printer. And if you had a tape in here, when you did that, you just blew that tape. Either you damaged it or you erased it. So... Um, that was another reason why these went back, because in the original manual, which I do have, it says when you turn your atom on, make sure you put your cape in and switch it on. Bam! You just blew your tape out. So there was actually stuff later, and uh, it might be actually on here. Actually, it does say it right here on this one, the label. Now, it's important notice. Data packs should be stored away from all electrical appliances when not in use. In particular, do not store data packs on a TV set, memory console, or atom printer. Do not power on or off the data pack on the unit. Failure to observe these precautions may, no, will, will cause damage to your data pack. Uh, it's going to destroy them. So I keep my packs well away from my Atom uh, when it's being turned on. So hold on one second while I go grab them. Okay, so here are the current uh, data packs that I own. Um, obviously, these are originals here. And these I had gotten, again, from Millie at Retro System Rescue, which uh, these are very hard to come by. Um, I got another copy of the uh, Smart Basic. Super Donkey Kong, Super Donkey Kong Jr., and Super Zaxxon, which are all the games I pretty much wanted to play. Um, there's also uh, a Dragon's Lair version, which I played, which if I can get one day, uh, it'd be great. But if not, I'm pretty happy with these. And again, I'm going to pull one out here. I'm going to pull out, say, the, uh, let's pull out the Smart Basic for a second. So when you take out the Smart Basic, you can definitely see, you know, it looks like a cassette. I mean, here's a cassette. Now, they're, they look pretty similar, but you can see Cassettes have additional holes here. The, data, the digital data packs do not. So that's one of the ways to make sure this didn't get put into a, uh, an audio tape. Now, again, since these are basically tapes, technically you can copy them in a dual deck uh, cassette player, which I do have. You have to modify, obviously, the, de the digital data pack to work in a cassette drive and vice versa if you're trying to use an old. Like, I could, you could take it a regular uh, tape, a quality one, okay? You can't use, like, a cheap cheap one it has to be like a very good quality maybe a metal tape to make copies uh and they do work i know people have done it uh but i'm not doing that in this video so again uh let's put a couple of these di digital data packs in and kind of check out uh some gameplay we'll start off with super donkey kong because obviously a lot, if you look at this video most likely you played the click vision donkey kong or at least seen it so let's take a look at the super action or super donkey kong let's put that in okay what I'm going to do here is uh, kind of show you how this would work. You would take your Donkey Kong uh, Super Game digital data pack, go to your drive. It actually works in either one. You're going to put it in. Again, make sure your Atom's already on. You're going to put it in the drive, close it, and all you do is hit the reset here. When you hit the reset, it's automatically going to load. And I'm going to let you kind of see how quickly these drives are. Here we go. One, two, three.
And we got our load screen now. Okay, so we come to our first screen, which is player one or two. We'll pick player one. See if it gets a little more centered for you guys there. And our skill level, I'm gonna take skill level two. You can see already they have the main intro screen from the arcade. Now to me, Mario seems to move a little more choppy than the ColecoVision version, but other than that, it's, it looks like it's improved as far as the gameplay itself. And I apologize, this is RF, it is not, um, ah! it is not uh, a component or F18A quality output. I haven't uh, done either of those two yet. Definitely not an easy game. Did a little cheating and here we go. A little video editing cheat. Now the Donkey Kong Super game does have all four levels. I'm not going to play through them just for time constraints, at least not in this video. I want to just at least show you two of the screens. Now, when you're done playing the game, uh, you definitely want to make sure that the digital data pack is not moving. So generally, I will hit the reset to put it in ColecoVision mode. Um, again, if you have a data pack that's actually reading or writing at the time, you pull it out, you're going to destroy it. So I'm just going to hit the little reset here. And the data pack stops. It is then safe to remove your data pack. And we're going to try one other one here. I'm going to just throw in uh, Super Donkey Kong Jr., another good game. And we'll hit the, the uh, reset here on the Atom. And you can see in real time how long it takes to uh, load a tape. Adam, the ColecoVision Family Computer System presents Donkey Kong Jr. by Nintendo. You have to put Super in there. There's a nice load screen. And again, uh, this port also has all of the screens of the arcade. And I think I might actually have a, an extra one. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I haven't played through this one yet. Pick our skill levels here. So aside from Donkey Kong himself looking a little bit different than I remember on the cartridge version, this screen looks pretty much the same. 
Uh, the uh, Donkey Kong Jr. character kind of moves in the same fashion, unlike Mario and uh, the Donkey Kong uh, versus Super Donkey Kong port. But this does have cutscenes and other screens that weren't in the cartridge. Like that. Take my butt. Oh, I got him. So again, I know this video went on a lot longer than uh, even I anticipated, but uh, if you do see a Clico Adam anywhere, uh, it's definitely worth picking up in my opinion. Um, it doesn't deserve the hate it has gotten. It's a fun system. Um, yes, um, it's a little quirky. Yes, the digital data packs are delicate, but there are people who, like Millie at Retro System Rescue uh, who can repair them. Uh, and if you get it at a good price, you also get a full-fledged ColecoVision as well. I'll do another video showing more stuff on that, but I just wanted to give you a quick general overview of the Coleco Atom. Um, it's a good system. Uh, it is large if you have to have the, uh, the printer, uh, which I would like to try and have all the parts, so... I do have the printer, um, but if you had just a memory console and external power supply, you get a ColecoVision, you get composite out standard. Um, you don't have to use the, uh, the RF when a ColecoVision, you have to modify that to get it or get an F18A in a ColecoVision for VGA out. Again, that could be done as well inside here, um, but I've seen the component out and its quality is pretty good. So I'll probably be happy with that for this right now. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And if you did like the video, do please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'll be doing a lot more videos. This one, I apologize for taking uh, longer to get out and being so long. But I do appreciate you watching, everybody. Have a great day. And please, if you have a chance, do check out Retro System Rescue, uh, Millie. He's got some great stuff at great prices. Everyone have a great day.